All right, example A says a rotation of 80 degrees clockwise is the same as what counterclockwise rotation? Well, you can see here if we took our original P, our blue one, which is our pre image, and we rotate it 80 degrees clockwise to get our new P, which is our image, or P prime, yeah? Rotating it 80 degrees is the same as rotating it counterclockwise 280 degrees. And we know it's 280 degrees because it's the rest of the way around the circle, right? And if we took the whole circle, 360 degrees, and we subtracted 80 degrees, that gives us 280 degrees. So that 280 degrees is the amount we'd have to go in the other direction to get to the same location. So we can either rotate clockwise 80 degrees or counterclockwise 280 degrees, and we'll get to the same point. Yeah? Example B. A rotation of 160 degrees counterclockwise is the same as what clockwise rotation? So now we're given it the other direction. So it says if we go counterclockwise 160 degrees, so we start with P, our image, and we rotate counterclockwise 160 degrees to get to P prime, our Oops, this is our pre-image, my bad. P prime, our image. Then, if we were to go the other direction and get to the same location, we'd have to do whatever number of degrees there is if we take 360 minus 160, which of course is 200. So we can either go counterclockwise 160 degrees, or we can go clockwise 200 degrees, and either way, we'll get from the same pre-image to the same image because we're ending up in the same location. Yeah? And then finally, for example, C, we need to rotate triangle ABC. So that's our blue one up here. Yeah? That has vertices at 7, 4, 6, 1, and 3, 1. Take that triangle and then rotate it 180 degrees and find the coordinates of A prime, B prime, C prime. Well, that's actually a lot easier than it looks because if point A is 7, 4, and point B is 6, 1, and point C is 3, 1, and we apply our rule that we learned for rotating for 180 degrees, let me remind you of that real quick rotating 180 degrees, we take our original x and y, and we just make it negative x, negative y, right? So we'll go back and take a look at our new points. We have 7, 4, so that means that a prime will be negative 7, negative 4. And b prime will be negative 6, negative 1. And c prime will be, oops, do I need two equal signs, do I? C prime will be negative 3, negative 1. And that's it. It's not that hard. We just had to apply our little rule and we were done.